Welcome back to painting and decorating. Now then, working on a Sunday. I thought I had the weekend off, but the customer phoned me up the other night and said uh, we're out Sunday, so if you want to finish the kitchen, you can do. So we're nearly a week on. Um, ceiling dried out perfectly. You can have a quick look at that in a minute. So. My customer wants a grey going on the walls. She's not chose a grey, but she's given me an idea of what she wants. So I'm actually going to mix a grey for the walls, which I'll show you that in a minute as well. Um, it's going darker. This was meant to be, I think this is pebble grey, uh, Dulux. So she wants it to go darker. So. We'll have a quick look at the ceiling and then we'll mix the colour. Starting in the corner there, you can see where I matched in the paper. And that's getting emulsioned, so you're not going to see that. But look at that, no cracks. You can't even tell where it's joined. Absolutely perfect. That's where the lump was. Just can't tell. Right then, on to mixing the grey for the wall. Quick look at what's going in the mix. So that's the main paint, pure brilliant white, vinyl silk because it's a kitchen. And that's the black I'm using. Uh, now, water-based, water-based, let's just have a look on the side here, that symbol there, that tells you it's water-based. I'm also going to put some no more mould, because uh, you know, it's a cold wall this, right onto the mixing. So what I'm going to do first of all is put half my white in the bucket because you don't put it all in because if you get the colour wrong you can add a bit more white and lighten it again. So first off half my white in the bucket what I'm going to use for the job and then a little bit of the black just to see how it goes and then build it up to how dark you want it. Make sure you stir your paint up before you use it. Give it a really good stir up, especially if it's been sat for a while. That's okay. Well, like I say, I'm only going to put half of the amount in that I want to do the kitchen. That'll be plenty. It's also a good idea to leave the customer some paint so they can touch up. And you can put that in a metal jar or something like that. Plastic or glass. Right. Time for the black. Now with this black I'm not just going to pour it in because that will be just too much. All I'm going to do is use some off the end of the stick and let that go in and stir it up. Basically, move that out of the way. Let's see how that goes. amazed that a little bit of black you know it really does go a long way so I'm getting a good I'm getting a good idea there of how deep that's gone and to be honest I want to go deeper than that so I'm gonna add some more black Now 
Now this time I'm going to add a little bit more and then I'm going to add my remaining white because I know whereabouts I'm going with this now. that a good stir up we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to test some on the wall so I'll just move the camera across to the wall now it's actually looking pretty much like it what's already on So that is a little bit blue and it's not dark enough so I'm going to add a lot more black to that. It's now just a process of adding more black and testing it on the wall and then when you, final, when you finally decide the colour allow it to dry for a bit because it always changes slightly. So. I'll carry on mixing this and then I'll show you the final bit on the wall. That's my final colour now. Um, I'll just show you on the wall there where I've been doing the test. So I'm actually drying it out as well. I've got my heater. So I'm going to dry it out and then you can have a quick look. But it's the end one that I'm going for. And you can see how it's gone up through the shades. These were more or less like the colour that was on. Um, she definitely wanted it darker. Right then. While those are drying, I'm just going to put this mould inhibitor in here. Don't get any on your hands. I'll do. And give that a good stir in as well. They're dry now <clears throat> and I've actually took a photograph, sent it to my customer to see what she thinks and um, she's gone for this dark one at the end which is lucky for me because that's what I mixed it to. Um, I had a feeling she wanted to go dark because it's quite a bright kitchen uh, and that other colour is just too light, you know. Um, right then, see you. Now what I've done I put my paint in this small scuttle and I've got a two inch brush for doing all the cutting in. Uh, bear with me a second. That's what I was looking for. My mini roller. Um, thick pile. Really good for doing textured papers like this. Um, and because it's a small kitchen, small area, I've got my small scuttle and my small roller. Cut in and roll as I'm going. You know, I've no need to carry a second paint pot with me, I can just carry that and I don't have to get up and down um, loading my roller right next to me. So I'll show you a little bit of cutting in and then you can have a look at the rolling. Always have your damp cloth to hand. Now, I'm going to just show you cutting in to the corner there and then a little bit out of the corner. Make sure you've got plenty of paint on your brush, you've worked it into the paint, you're not starting with a dry brush and just dipped into the paint. Now, this is difficult with one hand, but here we go. I should say this is difficult with a camera in your hand because you do paint with one hand. Now always remember on the first coat you're only getting the line to a certain level because of bristling the brush there. 
Hang on a sec. You're only getting the uh, line to a certain level, so on the second coat, you can actually straighten it up. It's not too bad. I'm going to take a dip. Sorry if the uh, camera's not in shot at times, but I try my best. Too bad, bad, bad. The first coat, a little bit more. Trying to look at the camera and the end of my brush. So, but that's not too bad. Going for the first coal. And everything's lumpy. Oh. That can be straightened up on the second coal when I've not got a camera in my hand. But it's not too bad. A little bit more and then I'll show you some rolling. I'm having that. That's a bit of cutting in there. Now, this is usually how I work. I'll keep that in my hand using my scuttle and my brush. Cutting in. It's a lot quicker doing it this way. roller. It's surprising how much area you get covered with one of these. Okay. 
good. Right, you can have a look at the finished when it's dry now. Right then, job done. And it looks pretty good. That's good, that colour. The customer is going to be well pleased. I do like the cooker. It's got a rock burner. 